Hello and welcome to Sewing Report Live, coming at you on a random Thursday. But seriously, welcome everybody. I hope 2022 is getting off to a great start for you. You got your sewing plans, your crafting plans. I was here shooting some other stuff and, I, you know, at this setup and I thought, hey, you know, why not jump on for a little bit and just see how everybody's doing, check in. I'm here. I, there are a few things I thought we could chat about. I'm also really hungry and my husband said he was going to bring me some food in a little bit. So that might be happening. Fun times. And uh, you can ask me questions. I also brought up my I've got the embroidery software tab ready to go, too. So if there is anything you think you want me to like walk through something like that, let me know. And we can also chat about like what you guys want to see here on the sewing report for the upcoming year, because I'm really excited. Um, I know I've been doing YouTube. It it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it's been I think five, I'm on my sixth year of doing this channel and uh, things are I never get tired of doing this, too. I just have to say, even after doing this so long, I still have a pretty small channel in all things considered, but I love doing this and I ne I just never get tired of making the videos or coming up with the ideas or sewing things. Happy New Year. All right, we've got a few folks in the house here. And uh, yeah, I, I thought, hey, I already put on some makeup and sort of halfway did my hair for some other videos I'm shooting, which are about the embroidery machine. So I know for whatever reason, I'm now like the embroidery machine person. And I never really thought that was going to be the case. I did not anticipate that at all, but it is. And I wanted to make some more embroidery content. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, we got some new subscribers in the house. Welcome. And I know, you know, sometimes I know some of y'all, you just like the like, hey, just straight up tutorial videos. Other people like chatty videos. So, hey, there's something for everybody. I do really like to talk. Um, I do have like a weird cough, though. So I just took some Tylenol severe cold and flu. So hopefully that will kick in uh, pretty soon. There's this weird thing where every most years I'll just get this cough that lasts like six months and that's just what happens. And no matter even if I go to the doctor, like it doesn't seem to help at all. And it just kind of always happens. So yeah, it is what it is. <clears throat> so I may be coughing intermittently, but, you know, I'm 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 fine. Like it's really like not not that bad. So I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you guys so much for all the love. And uh, we'll also talk about like things that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work on for this upcoming year as well. I know we're get, I'm getting kind of close to 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy cool. Uh, but at the same time, I also want to emphasize that I, I really don't like to look at just the subscriber numbers. I think my goal overall is just make the best videos possible and to introduce, you know, cool sewing projects or things that I think would be of interest or value or just sheer entertainment like the last video with with the scissors. So hope everyone's doing great. And yeah, if you have any que like random questions that you think I might be able to answer, throw them at me and I'll see what I can do. I do get a lot of people asking, you know, just questions on the channel, sewing machine recommendations. I get a lot of people DMing me on Instagram and just a, a quick housekeeping item. I, I get a lot of stuff that I just can't answer. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm not any sort of sewing machine tech. And I get a lot of people, they'll send me like pictures of their sewing machine. They're having a problem and they're like, can you help me with this? Um, and the answer for that is unfortunately, no, I'm not a sewing machine tech. And just due to time and liability issues, I can't do that sort of thing. So if you do have questions, I would encourage you to try to ask it on one of the videos in the comment section. Uh, but I don't normally answer a lot of those DM requests just out of the sheer fact that it's like a, a time suck. And also, you like, imagine like if I if I tried to actually do that, I would probably have to spend like what an hour trying to like and that's the thing. I'm not physically there. So if you do have a sewing machine issue, I would encourage you to reach out to a sewing machine, a tack or repair person that's someone that does that for a living or you can reach out to the manufacturer of your specific machine and they may be able to help. You also might be able to find the answer on online somewhere. So there's a lot of, uh, oh, these are not, someone's like, I love your shoulder pads. They're actually not, it's like just ruffles. So I don't know, that's that's all they are. 
but they do. You're right. They do sort of look like like shoulder pads. I, you know, it's it makes my shoulders are really small. So this definitely makes them look a little more substantial. So I guess that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, this person at flawless. I like the username. Will you be getting any new sewing machines? And I'm glad you asked that because I did do a poll asking what, if people wanted me to keep working with the same machines I have or incorporate new ones. And I know a lot of you do have the Brother CS7000i or a similar machine or the Brother PE800. So the consensus was that a lot of a lot of you wanted me to keep using those because that's why you're here. Um, I think if I do get other sewing machines. Now, in full disclosure, I have a few machines that you guys probably don't even know I have. I have a, Zin a vintage Singer 2012. I think I've talked about it a little bit but I haven't used it in a long time. So I may try to like, I, you know, it's one of those machines, so it's a beautiful machine and it works well, but it's not like super user friendly. And then I also have a sale right, like the LSZ one, whatever the one that does the straight stitch and the zigzag. And embarrassingly, I, I've had that machine for years and I've maybe used it twice and it was pretty expensive. So that's um, something is something I, I will admit and I have that machine. It's one of the that's one of those machines though that it's just I just find my other machines easier to use and I like to use the machine that's the most comfortable to sew on and that one I just don't personally find that comfortable for me. It I may try it for like some heavy duty sewing projects. So yeah, you may not even you probably y'all probably didn't even know I had a sale right but I do. And it's about, ugh, I, I want, I bought it like three to five years ago. Something, something like that. All right. We, all right. We got Benjamin. You're eating, you're eating butter and bread. All right. That sounds pretty, that sounds pretty tasty. So anyways, yeah, I do have some other machines. If I did get another one though, it would pro I would probably try to keep it fairly budget friendly. I think one of the issues is that if I, not that I could, because this would just not be in my budget, but I've seen people sew on like those really fancy $10,000 machines. And one, I would not, I probably wouldn't buy a machine that expensive to begin with. And the other thing that I am always concerned about is how many people can actually afford that machine? Not, not very many folks. Um, so that's, that's another concern that I always think about is, is this accessible to more people? And if it is, then, then I'm going to lean more towards that. But if it's something that hardly anyone can afford, then what use is it for me to make videos about it if it's something that where people are like, yeah, that's not going to not going to happen. All right. We got another question. What colors are you gravitating towards this year's wardrobe? For me, navy. I really do like navy blue. I I'm a big fan of pink, as you can tell. I also really like emerald green, like Kelly green. I've been wearing that in some videos. I love like royal blue. I'm not really... I guess like when I'm when I'm trying to make clothes or something, I usually I'm not, I'm more drawn to like the fabric or the print regardless of the color. But there are certain colors that I just do like and I think look look better on me personally. But I think there's a lot of fun colors out there and there's so many fun fabrics out there. So that's another really like great thing about it. Wow, there's actually there's a lot of people in here. There's I'm getting some I was like. And I literally just decided to go live maybe a half an hour ago. I was like, all right, I, I'm i here. You know, maybe I could just jump on for a little bit and chit chat and just catch up. Uh, but thank you so much, Shing. You know, sewing is definitely a really good therapeutic activity and it does really help. I really do feel like it has helped my like mental situation and you get it helps you really stress for me, at least it helps me relieve stress. Um, it helps me get my mind off of stuff and it's just a really great activity to focus on when you've got other, other stuff going on. All right. What do you think about the singer? I, I've never even heard of that. I, here's my thing with singer and maybe I'm just being a little judgmental is a lot of people have said the newer singers are not as good as like the vintage singers. But again, maybe I'm just being a little bit prejudice because I haven't actually used some of the newer singers. So they maybe they've made some improvements. I don't know. But, you know, a lot of the singer machines on Amazon have gotten really great reviews like the sing. I was looking at the singer heavy duty model. I 
There's a couple machines I'm curious about. Well, one, I did do some cover stitch videos a few years ago with the Janome. A brother has a cover stitch machine as well. That looks pretty interesting. And then I'm really curious about that those Juki industrial machines, like the Juki with like the DDL, DL like 5500 or whatever it is. That looks like a really great machine for like everyday use and just for someone who's making a lot of stuff. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. All right. This is going to be a mukbang now. Thank you. All right. My husband is here and I've got food. All right. I know. Wow. Okay. It's very blurry. All right. Let me try to. I feel like I'm in one of those like Korean, you know, mukbang videos or in a K drama. All right. So he just took some ramen noodles and put an egg on top. This might be, he did say it was going to be messy to eat. And I think he's going to be right. I'm not even sure what kind of utensils All right, he gave me. All right, he gave me a spoon and a fork. OK, <clears throat> so we got that going on. All right. Wow. All right. Have you which do you prefer to sew clothes or craft projects? I I know a lot of you guys like to do clothes. My personal favorites are cra like more home home items or like quilts and stuff like that. I just get really frustrated with fit issues and then stuff that goes wrong with the clothing. But I, I would like to do some clothing this year. Um, I do have some. I got a bolt of really pretty rayon wholesale and it's just really beautiful fabric. So that's really great. Um, I also got some knit fabric that I, I think I put it in one of my previous vlogs from Cloud9. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with those fabrics. They're really the Cloud9 knit fabric, it's organic. Their fabrics are all organic. And the co the cotton knit is really um, very, it's a very nice stable knit and it's a good quality. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with, with those. Um, and then I've been working on some new inventory for the Etsy shop. And I'm really jazzed about that because I just, I'm, I'm getting a shipment in this weekend and I've got some really cool new sewing notions coming in. So that's a lot of fun. Thank you. By the way, thank you everyone that has ordered from the Etsy shop. It's for me, it's been a really nice way to connect with people in a weird way. I just really enjoy it's something I really enjoy doing. Plus, I I'm glad that it's given me some insight into what it takes to operate an Etsy shop. So now I can talk to it and hopefully help you guys if you're also trying to do an Etsy shop as well. Um, the financials of it have been pretty interesting. It's about breaking even. So that's OK with me that it's it's something I just wanted to try out. And I'm not as long as I'm not like losing money, you know, I'm OK with operating it as is. But, I, you know, I like to include like little notes and it's just really nice to be able to um, like just kind of like meet people that way. That's been a lot of fun. <coughs> Sorry, the coffer, the coughing is. Oh, yeah, the coughing. I was up until like 5 a.m. coughing this morning, so that was not not great all right wow they everyone's getting sewing machines this year that's so much fun all right i'm getting the bro brother project runway so flawless i do want to say a lot of the brother machines though are pretty similar so even if there's not a lot of tutorials for that specific model like a lot of them are especially like if it's coming from one make like if it's a genomi or if it's a brother or singer a lot of them are going to be interchange, like they're going to be similar enough that you could follow other models and uh, and and it'll be pretty accurate to your machine, too. So don't be scared if your machine does not have a lot of review, a lot of like videos on it. If you can find something kind of similar, that that is one good thing about Brother is. That the machine like if you if you can learn one machine, another model from Brother, you you'd probably be fine on that, too. They have certain different functions, but a lot of the features are like this one has more stitches or something. So some of the features are going to be fairly similar to the same on different models. So don't be too scared off by that. All right. Let's see here. We had Dory from Hawaii. Hawaii. What time you guys? OK, so you guys are like, but like what, six hours behind, I think something like that. So very cool. Awesome. OK. Oh, and I also wanted to this is this is not so happy news. I I learned yesterday. Um, 
I'm sure a lot of you guys may have have seen already or learned about Melanie Ham, and I was just totally shocked. Um, so she, Melanie has been on YouTube. She's like an OG she, YouTuber, and I found her videos when I was pretty new to sewing, and I really enjoyed her channel. She was, um, she just brought so much to this space um, in terms of exposing new people to knitting and quilting and sewing. And uh, I just cannot believe that she's gone. So if you have not heard, Melanie had, I had watched her videos. Um, so Melanie had, was battling cancer. And I think it started last year. And I'd watched her videos talking about her um, upcoming surgery and the progress. And I didn't realize it had been that long since she had posted a video, but it has been several months um, so I guess things, I guess she was, her health obviously was having some issues and I just learned that, that she, she has passed away. Um, so like I myself, am still processing it. I obviously didn't know her real well, but, um, I mean, I'm definitely prayers for her family. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, prayers for the ham family and just keep them in your thoughts because, uh, she seemed like such a nice, genuinely kind person. Um, and actually, I do have a story about her that I want to share. I met her. I went to QuiltCon in 2016. And Melanie was was there because she it was in Los Angeles and she that's where she lived. And uh, at the time, I was just starting this YouTube channel, like literally just starting it. And I, you know, I had talked to the QuiltCon people and they were going to let me like film there and do all kinds of stuff. And I set up interviews with people there and stuff like that. And I happened to meet Melanie at QuiltCon. And uh, she did an interview for a channel. And again, at the time, she was a, even then, was a pretty large channel. So she had several hundred thousand subscribers. I had like none. And she uh, was totally cool with just doing an interview for someone with a YouTube channel with like no subscribers. So that says a lot about what kind of person she was. And uh, I do want to, I just want to share this with you guys. Um, so I want to share a little clip from QuiltCon 2016, um, just in, in honor of Melanie. So let me just pull this up real quick. The Saphir, Jenny Doan, and YouTube sensation, Melanie Ham. I love quilting. I love quilters. And I love seeing all the new things that are coming out. The quilt show is always amazing. So it's really inspiring. And don't even get me started on the shopping. The shopping. Then so yeah, I, I just, I can't believe this has happened. But, uh, you know, I saw the post yesterday from her husband and I just, I didn't even know what to think. Um, so my a friend of mine who was my college roommate, we were both big Melanie fans. And it's just really, really sad what happened. Um, but I, you know, it was really cool getting to meet her. And I just, uh, you know, she was just such a warm and kind person. So anyways, I just wanted to to touch on that real quick, just because um, I know a lot of, you know, like that's pretty big news in the quilting and sewing world. And uh, it's just, um, you know, I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. So all right, so let's read some more comments. Okay. Okay. All right. There's a few comments I probably probably can't read. Um, yeah, YouTube. There, YouTube. There's certain topics where where you probably don't want to want to talk about too much. But uh, but okay. Here's one I can talk about. How is the bunny? She is. She's very good. Um, she's. She's almost a, she's getting to be a year old fairly soon. And I really like having the bunny. They are a lot of, they're not a low maintenance pet. So if you are going to get a, a bunny rabbit, uh, please know that this is not like a, this is not like getting a gerbil. Um, I spend at least several hours a day with bunny related things. I clean the litter box out every day. I also give her some free roam time around the kitchen <laughs> and there's a lot I have to do with her food situation 
and just replacing the hay and I give her a salad every day and it's it is a lot of fun having a rabbit but it's definitely a I, I would say fairly time consuming pet at least in my opinion and I can't imagine that it might be a little hard to go on vacation if you have a rabbit because they I don't think rabbits travel super well I don't think mine would so if I was going to go out of town or something, I would need to have like someone to take care of her. Um, now, if you are interested in bunny, anyone who's interested in bunny um, education, I would encourage you to visit 101 Rabbits. That's a great channel. And Hooks Hollands. Those two channels were like my go to as far as learning about how to care for a rabbit A really helpful and a lot of great information. So there's a lot of stuff out there um, for that. <coughs> so oh my gosh sorry all right I might take a bite of food real quick so just just bear with me here all right I don't even know how I'm gonna eat this food okay all right here's here's the food okay all right Marin I have an angora and she requires 30 minutes of day a, gr a day of grooming wow yeah that's a lot of I try to mine sheds quite a bit too also she's very um they're very destructive. So they will chew on pretty much anything they can get their teeth on. So she does try to chew stuff she's not supposed to sometimes. Um, and also, like, I she has a cardboard box and she constantly tries to, like, flip it over. So, like, you'll hear a bunch of ruckus and then it's the bunny and she's, like, trying to... And the, the box will just be, like, like, every which way. So that's kind of funny, too. So the bunnies are a lot of fun, though. Anyways, all right, I'm just going to take a bite of food real quick. Sorry, this is also turning into a Korean mukbang video. Yeah. All right, here we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good. And my husband just used those really cheap Marushan type, uh, you know, ramen. Ooh, all right, you put some spice in there. Oh, my gosh, my sinuses are going to be crazy. But yeah, you guys have any questions about stuff I've covered in the videos or anything, let me know. I also want to talk a little bit about Etsy. Because I'm in some Etsy groups and, you know, Facebook groups. And then I lurk. I lurk in the subreddit. I don't really say much in there because um, people can be a little a little out there. Um, but I did a video a few months ago with a bookkeeper slash um, lady with CPA experience named Sarah Kornick. And if you are an Etsy seller, there are some uh, tax changes you need to be aware of for 2022. But it's interesting because a lot of people are, seem really up in arms about certain things that are going on with Etsy. Like this whole star seller program is like ridiculous. And I, I and by the way, I am not a star seller. Um, and there's overall, there are things that I, I have some criticisms of Etsy overall. I think it's a good platform. Um, but I do think there are some things about Etsy that if I was in charge of it, I would do things a little bit differently. But overall, I, I think for what you, for what you get as a seller on the platform, I'm not dissatisfied with it. So I see a lot of people complaining in all of these places and, you know, it's, it is what you it is what you make of it. You would have some issues if you had your own website selling stuff. You would have issues on Etsy. It's I think it's one of those things where no matter what you're doing, there's always going to be some downsides to it. And I think for the ease of use, I think Etsy is definitely the place to be if you don't want to deal with like having to figure out state sales tax for every state or whatever. But it's interesting because I'm starting to see a lot of like there are a lot of hobby sellers on Etsy and I think I do think this whole IRS $600 tax threshold is going to push a lot of people out of Etsy that kind of sell more for fun and don't rely on the income because what's happening is that if you if you generate more than $600 or more of income on any online payment platform that includes like Facebook Marketplace Etsy, Zelle, PayPal, all of the, all of those. The IRS starting this year is required to 
generate a 1099K. So that's going to alert the IRS to your income. So if in the past you have not been filing, if you have not been reporting that income or acknowledging it uh, moving forward, uh, you're not going to have a choice. Uh, but the thing that's going to really, I think, hurt a lot of like the more hobby sellers is the fact that in order for you to not have to pay taxes on, obviously, when you're selling stuff on Etsy, not everything is profit. There's costs. So if you're making handmade purses and your materials cost $20 and you're selling them for $60, you obviously can deduct a lot of those expenses. You can also deduct your you know, shipping supplies, anything like that. So you're really only you really only need to pay taxes on the profit. But in order to show that to the IRS, you have to be able to show all you prove all of your expenses. And I think the hassle of that is probably going to dissuade a lot of people who are not selling a lot. So I think that's going to be pretty interesting. And I saw some folks speculating that that is definitely going to be happening. A lot of people are going to be leaving Etsy if they don't sell enough to make it worthwhile. And I can see that happening. And I'm already seeing people ask questions like that, like, hey, I only sold, I only made $400 worth of profit. What do I have to do? And it it does suck for those people. And I do feel a lot of empathy, empathy for them because that is, that does seem a little bit crazy um, to have to deal with all that. I mean, in order for me to just do Etsy, I had to get a CPA. I got QuickBooks and I'm really trying to keep track of everything. And it's just really insane, all of the stuff that you got to do. Like, it, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. So, yeah. So if you guys are interested in seeing more Etsy type business content, let me know here in the chat or below in the comments if you're watching this on the replay, because that is really an area I'm interested in in trying to do more content to help people try to figure out this stuff because it can be pretty confusing and complicated. And it's something that I've personally been interested in because I've had to go through it myself. So if that's something you want to learn about, let me know below. I'm thinking about doing a video explaining all of my Etsy finances. Like how, like I'll share how much money I made, how much, what were my expenses? Is it worth it? And that is something that I've been really thinking about doing. So if that's something that you're into, uh, let me know. Cause I think that would be, I think it would be a fun video. All right, I'm gonna take another bite of these noodles. These are actually really good, but they're, they are pretty spicy. Okay. Wow. That is super spicy. Paula, thank you for the comment. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, I can't imagine what they're going through because their family is very young. Her husband looks pretty young and her children, she has two kids and they look very young. So that's got to be just really devastating for everyone there, you know, especially for the kids um, to, to lose their mom. So that that just has to be really rough, um, you know. All right. <laughs> Christine says, I'm an Etsy seller, but I feel lost it's really confusing, especially when you have to do the tax stuff. Um, like, again, I'm I normally do my own taxes and I'm pretty comfortable with those aspects and tasks. I'm not too intimidated by it, but I really was not comfortable with doing it this year uh, without help from the CPA because I just want to make sure I'm doing everything right. And also, like, this is kind of off topic, but... Um, I got I got a very detailed but also very intimidating letter from the CPA, email from the CPA, telling us everything we have to do for the tax stuff. And uh, I did not realize you have to also if you so if anyone also owns crypto, you have to have like these gains and loss reports. And I have some small amounts of crypto. Again, I'm not like a crypto millionaire, but I do have I, I did buy like you know, again, very tiny amounts of crypto. So he sent me, the CPA sent me instructions on what I need to do to report to the IRS my crypto assets. And I wanted, to, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, I wanted to cry. Um, I was so confused by these this whole thing. And I went to the tool he recommended. It's called like Cointracker.io. And 
I I just I don't even know what I'm I don't even know what I'm going to do. I watch tried to watch a few videos. I, I again, I watch a ton of YouTube myself. If I ever need to know anything, I just go to YouTube and I'm like, "All right, I got to I got to do this." And I watched I, I found some channel called The Crypto Dad. I know there's some really weird stuff on YouTube. And I watched some of his video on trying to import your like wallets or whatever into this this tool and uh I just I felt dumber after watching the video than before I started. So I was like, oh gosh. So that's going to be I think I think interesting. Um if you, and also I want to know if you guys are in Etsy, Etsy sellers, what do you think about this whole star seller program? I think the thing that annoys me about it is the reviews. So in order to become a star seller, you have to have at least like 95% um, ship on time rate, I think at least 95% responding to messages within 24 hours, and then 95% um, five-star reviews. So here's my beef with the whole review thing, is that if someone gives you a four-star review, Etsy sees that the same as a one-star review in terms of the star seller program. So you have to get 95% of five-star reviews. It's not like an average it's not like an averaged out score, you know, like when you were in school and you got a 95 out of 100 or whatever. So I'm like, so a lot of customers do give four star reviews, you know, and, and I think a four star review should still be considered pretty good. But it sucks because if you get a four star review, that could knock you. I mean, that could knock you out of the running for star seller altogether. Um, so that's pretty odd. And I, so I do, I really think they should go to a percentage, like average out all of your reviews and what percentage it is. Like you got an overall 96 or 97. I think that would be, that would make more sense. Um, but what I'm seeing from a lot of Etsy sellers is that they're so panicked over getting a review under five stars and people are like, like there seems to be a high amount of anxiety over stuff like that or customers opening cases against them or anything like that, that I think like it's just really stressing people out. And I think that's pretty not healthy. Um, but I do think there's some things Etsy could improve. I also personally think they should go to a 10 star review. Um, a 10, like instead of like one, two, three, four, five stars, why not 10 stars? I think that leaves room for a lot more nuance with the, you know, how happy... Because I feel like four, you know, there's a difference to me between four out of five and nine out of ten. You know what I'm saying? And I personally would love if they did ten stars. I just think that leaves you a lot more room for how accurate the review is. I don't know. All right. Dory, are you, what are you asking about? Do they have to make a certain amount also? Is that for a star seller? Or are you asking more about like tax stuff? Let me know. Let me know. Yeah. And guys, if you're just joining in on this live stream. This is totally random. You can ask me whatever you want. You know, I may have an answer. I may not. I'm also eating ramen. So, you know, we're having a good time, right? All right. I also think I got, I think I, I think I like, you know, when you're eating something and like something like gets flicked across the room, I think I may have done that. It might've gone into my keyboard. I don't know. So, Let's eat some more. Let's eat some more noodles. All right, you guys get to watch me eat. I'm I'm sure you're like, wow, this is not exciting. Mm. I have to say, though, this is pretty good. All right, so let's talk about sewing projects. Also, you should know this about me. I am a ridiculously slow eater. I, I, it takes me forever to eat. So I'll probably be eating this for three hours. Okay, so you're asking for star seller. No, I don't believe you have to sell a certain amount of product. Here, let me, I'll try to bring this up so you guys can see what the criteria is for star seller. Um, the other thing I would say about Etsy is I think the star seller, oh, I think the star seller program, all right, somehow I knocked myself out of this. I don't know what happened here. All right, hold on, guys. Hold on. Something happened to the camera. I don't know what. 
I don't know what happened with the camera here. All right. This is weird. All right. I'm trying to come back here. All right, I think. All right, all right, I think we're back. I don't know what. All right. I don't know what's going on here. This is so strange. All right, oh, it keeps defaulting to this like weird thing. Okay. All right, I think we're good. All right, I think I'm back. All right, so let's bring up the star, the whole star seller thing. I'll show you my progress. Um, Cause it's like not, I, I've got like a 94 for the five star ratings. And the other crit critique I have with the whole Etsy stuff is that I think that this is going to um, create like a weird environment for the customers too. Because all of these sellers are so obsessed with the star seller program, like the ones I'm seeing on these online forums, that like they're just like going like crazy over it. I, and I think that's not health. That's probably not a like healthy thing. So in order to get star seller, you know, like you have to have a 95% or more response rate for the messages for Etsy messages. And you have to respond within 24 hours. You have to get 95% or more five star ratings. And you have to have 95% or more on time shipping and tracking. So for my shop, itself I've always been a hundred percent for the most part with the messages and with the um the track the shipping and tracking because I really do like to try to ship out the next the next day the ratings thing I've gotten I, I think I've gotten mostly five star ratings I got one four star rating but it was a good positive review I did have one I haven't had too many you guys have been great I did have one kind of nightmare customer who I think was just sort of looking for something to find wrong with whatever. I don't think she knew what she was ordering. Um, also, she messaged me before she placed the order. Also, they did it from like a weirdo, like new, like it was like they created like a, like a throwaway account. So it wasn't anyone that had like a history or anything on Etsy. And they, they bought my Seraflex, the Seraflex thread I sell. And they said it was not elastic. And they said it, they gave me a one star review. Oh, so first, before they placed the order, they messaged me and was like, they said, I just ordered this. You need to ship at your earliest, which again, I think that's kind of a red flag for customers if they're going to do that. And then she was, so I send the stuff out. I send the thread out. I was very quick about it. And then she said, this is not what I wanted. This is not elastic, which I've used, I use the thread all the time. It's definitely elastic. Um, it's like, and that's the thing, there are different types of elastic thread too. And she thought it was going to be something different, but she didn't read the, she clearly didn't read the listing. I also have a video showing the product in action. And then she's like, I need to return this. I said, hey, my shop doesn't have a return policy. Now, officially, I will say this. Officially, I do not have a, re a return or exchange policy. But if somebody had an issue with the order, and it was my fault or something that kind of happened like an accident, I would definitely rectify the situation. But what I want, the reason I wanted to have that policy was to avoid situations like that, where it was just a, you know, someone who changed their mind or someone who just clearly like didn't understand what they were ordering. Like that's also not my fault. And I, you know, if I, because my shop is breaking even, if I even did a few returns, every month, I would lose money on the shop and then it would not make sense um, to to run to operate anymore. Um, so that's why I officially don't have a return or exchange policy. But again, there's definitely room for exceptions. And if something happened and it was not the customer's fault, I would certainly want to make sure that things were made right. I you know, a lot of shop owners are just there are people, customers who try to scam sellers and there are sellers who try to scam customers. It's really kind of kind of nuts. So, you know, overall, my experience has been good. Um, but again, I think sometimes with with all of this stuff like Amazon and like big box online sellers, I feel like some customers are expecting small handmade Etsy sellers who have a, a like a small business to be able to offer the same type of 
return policies or exchanges or refunds that a big company can. And that's just not the case. Like I'm not Amazon. I can't eat those losses like a big corporation can. And I do wish most Etsy customers are really fantastic, but there are some that seem to have an expectation that's not realistic for Etsy. So that's my opinion on Etsy. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, this is a good question. Is there a selling platform better than the other less hassle, easy to maneuver? I haven't found one. If 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 another one pops up, I you know, I I'm sure people would jump over to it. A lot of people that sell on Etsy also want to do their own website. But here's the thing. If you want to set up the shopping thing on your own website, that's time consuming to make all of that stuff. I've created a web websites before and it's not very fun for me and it's like very tedious. I don't really enjoy doing it and it does take some time. The other thing you have to think about is with Etsy, they take care of a lot of the legal stuff. Like they're now collecting Florida sales tax for me. So I don't have to worry about that. I still have to file, file my reports. I just list all the sales as exempted, but at least they're doing that. And uh, when I talked to, if you guys haven't watched the Etsy sellers conversation I had with Sarah Kornack of Small Business Sarah. Check it out because she had some really great insight. She's an Etsy seller and uh, has worked as a CPA for a long time. And she said that um, if you have your own website, you have to not only worry about the tax laws in your own state, but for every other state too. And if you sell internationally, you have to worry about like the VAT taxes. So the fact that Etsy takes care of all of that really for me makes it worthwhile and I'm happy to pay the fees and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty, it, it, yeah. So I, I still feel like Etsy is for, for my needs, the best game in town right now. So I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Nancy, you're right. Some people never give five stars and I'm kind of like that too, but because I know that about Etsy, I'm a little more, um, I, now that I'm so super aware of how anxious sellers get over the reviews, um, I'm kind of at the point where I either leave a five-star review or I leave no review. If I'm like kind of okay about whatever happened, I don't want to leave them a bad review. So I end up leaving, like that's where I'm at. Like I feel like it's a tough situation for everybody because I end up leaving no review because I don't want to leave them a bad review, which is sort of like nuts. So, oh, thank you. All right, yes, I remember you. Okay, Tatiana, yes, I remember. I definitely remember your order. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's really cool, like, just being able to connect with you in that way and be able to. The other thing I, the other reason I personally like having an Etsy shop as a YouTuber is because sometimes it's always very dicey to recommend products to people if I don't know if you can get it. Like, if I'm recommending, fa if I use fabric that I've had for five years, it's probably not available anywhere, but at least I can have a little bit more control over just knowing the av availability of the items. Like when I was doing the, the holiday sew along stuff, at least I know you can get that fabric because I'm the one who has it. So um, I feel like that hopefully should be a benefit because I always hate when someone use, like if I'm watching a YouTuber and they are using something and I'm like, oh, that looks so cool, but you can't get it anywhere. And I'm like, oh man, that's kind of a bummer. So I like to try to, you know, use stuff that, that you can still get. So that, cause that can be so frustrating if you're like, I really want that. And then it, you know, it's no longer being sold, you know, or something, something like that. So, all right. And Tatiana, you are in luck because I have filmed I was just filming before I jumped on here. I was filming, I'm filming two more uh, embroidery machine videos. So I'm going to do one video on changing the thread colors. Uh, so there's two, there's a questions I get a lot and it's, um, do you have to like change the thread every time you want to get a different color? And the answer is yes. So I did a video demonstrating that. And then I also did another video um, showing how to combine designs. So hopefully that'll be helpful. I've also, I still really want to do the video um, hooping a hoodie, like a hooded sweatshirt. I see that, like that particular project request a lot online. So that's something I'm working on. I'm just not sure what kind of design to put on the hoodie. 
also I've been feeling a little like under the weather the last couple weeks. So it's been kind of, um, yeah, I just, I have not been feeling up to as much as usual. So that's been a little bit, oh, like definitely a, l a little bit um, of a, of setback as far as my own, you know, my, my own ability to do things. Um, so that's, I think it's going to be a great, I think it's going to be a good year. I also would, I, I'm thinking about doing some quilting stuff. I, for some reason, I just get the, I'm just getting the itch to make another quilt. I haven't made a quilt in a while. So that's something I'd like to do. Oh, <coughs> excuse the coffee. <coughs> Sometimes I get like really <coughs> obnoxious coughing fits and they're always at like the worst times. Like I'm trying to go to sleep or something. And I'm not sure. <coughs> I'm not really sure if I should keep taking Tylenol severe cold and flu. But I am. I'm so glad everybody likes the embroidery machine videos. I just, I had no idea that was going to be like the most popular videos. That's so strange to me. But people are really getting into embroidery. And that's like super cool. Also, if you guys didn't know, um, I live outside Tampa, Florida. And um, Tampa is going to be the number one housing market in the country, according to Zillow. So that... That's been pretty crazy. And um, I don't know if y'all like are into the housing market stuff, but I know this is totally random, but home prices here and rent prices here in Tampa are going bonkers. I was looking at some new apartments in downtown Tampa. And do you guys want to know how much they're charging for rent? A three bedroom apartment in downtown Tampa is going for $5,500. I about like fell off my chair. I just, I don't, I also want to know who's pay, who is going to pay five grand for an apartment in downtown Tampa? I mean, it's not, it's just not like that. It's not, it's a hot area. Don't, don't get me wrong, but not, not $5,000. Awesome. Um, my mortgage is like 1200 bucks, which when we bought this house we're in, I really thought that was like, I was like, oh man, I don't know if I want to, I was, I was kind of bulking at like how compared to our other mortgages, this is the most expensive one. <coughs> but the fact that houses like mine are renting out for $4,000 a month. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm wondering how long this is going to last and like what, what's going to happen. But I just can't believe what's going on here in Tampa. A lot of people are moving to Florida. This is I guess one of the more popular states people are coming to. And every time I turn around, somebody else is announcing that they're moving to Florida. Uh, but if you're trying to move here, uh, the rent prices are going bananas. So a lot of people are being priced out of the market or priced out of their apartment. Like I'm seeing a lot of posts on Reddit, like landlords raising price from 1400 to 2200. I need to move. And it's just, it's just nuts because I got to say, when I moved here, I first moved to Tampa in 2007. You could get an apartment for $600. And I had more than one apartment that was like $600, I think like $950. And my first, um, well, actually, my second mortgage, the first mortgage I had here in Florida was $500. <laughs> so, man, that was just... I. I mean, those were the days, I guess, two, 2009, I guess. So <coughs> it's just, it's just crazy. Um, funny you should say this. I do reuse paper towels and I'm not embarrassed. I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> I don't know if it's like, I, although I think, I don't know if it's genetics or whatever, but a lot of Asian people reuse stuff that's meant to be thrown away, like plastic bags or like Ziploc bags. Um, so I do, or it, and not in like a weird way. Okay, so here's what I do. So <clears throat> I'll take a paper towel and like, you know, dry my hands on it. 
but then I'll like put it on the counter and then I'll kind of stack them up. And then as they dry, I continue to use those same ones throughout the day uh, to dry my hands. I'm not trying to sound like I have some sort of like disorder. Uh, I do probably wash my hands 20 plus times a day for various reasons. Uh, I'm not like compulsive about it. I just end up doing a lot of stuff that requires me to wash my hands, like picking up rabbit poop and that sort of thing. I'm not going to pick up rabbit poop and then like make food. So I have to keep doing that. Or when I go to the restroom, I'm not going to go and, you know, go so after that. So just it's not like I'm trying to wash my hands a lot. I just end up washing my hands a lot just because of certain things. So you you definitely have me pegged. <coughs> it is pretty it's pretty crazy stuff here. Um, let me know in the chat or in the comments here too, what, what kind of stuff are you interested in getting, um, tutorials on or maybe seeing me make? I do have an idea for a really cool sewing project, a couple cool sewing projects. They're kind of like smaller. Um, I'd also like to do like some sort of in inspo type sewing, like trying to make stuff that looks like something else. I've got one idea that I've, I have the fabric cut out for, but I just have, have to work on like putting it together and stuff. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> okay, this ramen is actually pretty good. I think my husband put a little sugar in it too. It's very tasty. It's very spicy though. Yeah, very. Very spicy. Hopefully this helps the sinuses, though. <clears throat> and yes, if anyone, I would encourage you, not not a plug. Well, it's sort of a plug. Um, if you're not aware, I do help somebody else with their YouTube channel. And it's about real estate. So if you are looking to move to Florida... I would encourage you to check out the YouTube channel, Melanie Loves Tampa Bay. Uh, that's the one I produce for. She's a friend. And uh, she's like the only one to help with YouTube stuff. But her channel, we've done a lot of really helpful videos about Florida and about the Tampa area in specific. So check that out if you are thinking about moving to Florida. I do really, I, you know, I like living here. I don't really have any major complaints. And, uh, you know, it's still... It's obviously with the housing prices, it's still, it's getting a little more expensive here. But overall, I, I think the quality of life here is pretty good. Fave ramen brand. Okay, so my husband made like that, just the real cheapo Marushan brand. I really like this one brand. I forgot what it's called. Um, But it's it's not the Marushan brand. It's I like this stuff called Beef Teriyaki. I forgot what the brand name is called, but I it's in like a red and black uh, packaging. And that's my favorite ramen brand. Hello, everybody. All right, we got Minnesota. Wow. And Jacksonville. All right, so apparently Jacksonville is the number two housing market in the country, according to Zillow. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I just wanted to jump on and do a little chit-chat. Again, if you're just joining in, you have any questions about the videos or you just want to comment on anything, let me know. And I really, I'm just here. I'm eating, and I was shooting some other videos and I just thought I would jump on for a little bit and see see what's up. Um, also, I'm weird, so I thought this would be kind of, I don't know, just sort of randomly fun. <clears throat> you know, Enigmata, if you had bought a house here in 2009 or several homes, uh, you would be rolling in it. Because we bought a house in Florida in 2009 for $47,000. And it recently sold for $237,000. This was like a two-bedroom, very small house. It was like 800 square feet. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, I just can't believe how much it sold for. And yes, adding, adding meta, I did mention Melanie um, a little earlier on in the live stream. Um, it was, yeah, it's super, just so sad. And I just, you know, I was I was not expecting to hear that at all. She was super cool. I did get to meet her at QuiltCon in 2016. And uh, she, yeah, if you look up my older QuiltCon video, she's in it. And she was super nice. And I just can't believe 
I can't believe she's gone. I mean, it's just, you know, so like she was she was so young. Like that's that's kind of weird to think about, too, because there have been some people that I know who have passed away or knew of and they're like my age or younger. And that always feels very like surreal because you don't you never know. It could be could be any one of us. Uh, 47K, you can't even buy a parking spot in California for that. Woo. Yeah, I know. You're, yeah, that housing market in California can be pretty, pretty crazy. <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't even think I could afford to like live in a cardboard box in LA. So I'm not, I'm not even going to try. But yeah, like that house, the $47,000 house, that was kind of a box. And, uh, See, I'm doing this live stream. I'm eating dinner. I have to clean. I have to clean up the rabbit. So I normally clean the rabbit litter box around like 11 p.m., midnight, something like that. And then I, I've been trying to go to bed early, earlier, because I got a jury duty next week, and I'm gonna have to get up at like 5 a.m. And that's probably gonna kill me. So <clears throat> I'm not really looking forward to that at all. For, I've gotten called for jury duty like every like it's. I was just, I just did jury duty like about a year ago. You know, I really, I don't know how old Melanie was. She didn't, I mean, she, we, I feel like she was probably close to my age. I mean, her kids though, they're, the kids are so young. And that's the thing that I think is really just so awful about it too. So, I mean, I doubt you know, I would think maybe like, maybe late 30s, early 40s. I don't think she was any older than that, though. I have no idea. But, oh, th she was 37? Wait, are you for real? How do you know? Well, so she was younger than, she's younger than I am then. Because, guys, I'm I'm about 40. I'm going to be 40 this year. So, um, that's, Wow. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. I just, I, I'm really bad. At, I'm terrible at guessing ages. I'm just not good at it at all. But man, that's, to be 30, 37. Oh my gosh. <coughs> yeah, Enigmata, you're right. I that, Yeah, the, fo the photos her husband posted are just like heartbreaking. Um... But yeah, definitely keep her keep her family in your thoughts this week. And um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I if I hear of anything else, like if the if their family if her family puts anything else out, I'll I'll definitely try to share it. Um, because I know she was so everybody knew everybody knows Melanie Ham, and uh, you know I I watched a lot of her videos, you know, and it's just just crazy. Julie, you are, I wish you were right. Believe me, I do. But I was born in 1982, so I, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I actually don't mind. I'm not really going to mind hitting 40, though. I don't think, you know, I really don't, I just don't care. I think it's, you know, like the older you get, the more, <coughs> the older you get, like the less you care, I guess. I don't know. But. No, I didn't matter. You're right. She right. Yeah, she was. I mean, she her channel was so great. And again, she was so, she seemed like such a nice, genuine person. And uh, what a such a beautiful family. I was just thinking, you know, I was just thinking about it. And it also feels like unfair to her. Like, I don't have any kids and I'm, you know, here you know, why, like, why do things like that happen to, to great people who have a lot to live for? Like, that's, that's what really is just like the, the question of the ages is why do, why do such awful things happen to the, like, it's always the best people too. <coughs> oh, sorry. All right. I got that Tylenol severe cold and flu. I'm not really sure how long you're supposed to keep taking it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep taking it. But I'll probably jump off in a little bit and try to try to finish eating 
Um, but I'm I'm glad I got to jump on for a little bit and just chat with everybody, catch up. If you're watching this on the replay again, let me know if you have any questions or request re video requests or anything else. Uh, but guys, I'm gonna jump off pretty soon. Okay, let me let me read a couple more comments. Amber, that's a yeah, she, yeah. Her Juki did look really cool, and that that is why I've noticed a lot of like like serious bag makers and quilters tend to use a Juki. I've never owned a Juki before. So I think if I do a new machine this year, I'm, I am I would really love to try to get a Juki. I don't know which Juki, but I think that would be a really neat um, model to try. So yeah, here in Florida, so many things in Mount Dora. But thank you guys all for for catching up. If you want to see, I have done some vlogs recently. Recently, so if you like this sort of like casual chat, you feel you're welcome to check those out. And uh, if you're new here, welcome. I really appreciate every one of you. And if you've been if you've been entertained in any way, I would love if you could hit that like button. And if you if this is your first time here, you're welcome to subscribe. We do sewing and craft videos, and sometimes just you know, just random stuff like this. We just have, we just have fun here for the most part. So anyways, I'll catch you guys later. I'm working on the, I am, the next video is going to be an embroidery machine video. So for all the brother PE 800, uh, fan, fan folks out there, uh, the, I think you will like the next couple of videos. So have a great evening and I will catch everybody later. And remember, whatever you're doing, make sure it's fun.